already talked about, but um, if you go to our website and click on resources and then mailing list, then you'll get the updates for when grants open. Do we have any further questions, uh, Kamazi, from the, from no. the crowd? Here, and I think it's for you. Uh, people want this, um, this discussion day is recorded and where they can access this recording if it is. Yeah. Yeah, so if you are just coming into the room, um, this session is being recorded, FYSA, um, and you will be able to find um, this discussion on our website um, under the tags. If you will look, it'll have a specific uh, tag for each um, community outreach program that we have running right now. And if you want to, whether it be Business of the Arts or CAH in the community, you can go back and look at any um, previous recorded material. Um, and just as a FYI, some of our workshops due to certain legal um, legalities um, have been um, abridged to meet those uh, standards. So we do apologize about that, but we wanna thank everybody for participating and being here actually present in the room, um, asking questions uh, and participating with us today. Did we? Did I have any more questions, um, Kamanzi? No, and I, I've been kind of answering some of these because we've had so many. You guys just had such good good discussions. I I, uh, I answer a lot of the questions. I'm also going to put everyone. I'm going to put my email address on here. I think you guys know we have a redesigned website. So if there are any programming or grant questions, always feel free. My name's Kamanzi again. Just to reach out, I'll give you the answer. If I don't have the answer, I'll connect you with the person that has the answer. But um, at any time. I don't care how random the question is. Just, um, just take advantage of my email address. I'm about to drop it in the, in the chat box right now for everybody. And that, that's all we have, Devon. Okay. And for moving, moving forward, because we'll just do one more um, after this particular um, topic of discussion. If you can't just hold off so that everybody can um, potentially hear a question, because it may be something that somebody. Uh, may have missed or may not have thought about um, that may be beneficial to the overall group. But I do want to thank you for being super, super proactive over there because I'm sure it's a ton. I see it kind of just moving. But um, I want everybody who is here with us uh, today to be able to hear all of the questions um, that may come about uh, to be able to assist them in whatever area they may need um, when it comes to you know applying to these grants. Um, and going through the whole process. So with that being said, um, before we went into the Q&A portion, you had brought up something about budget. Um, and that's where I was kind of going to go next. As we all know, uh, money, we live in a capitalist society, so money always uh, matters. Um, and people like to see those statements and see kind of how the organization is going. But my question to you is, um, what should an applicant or how can they go about, you know, building a budget narrative? Uh, and what exactly is a budget narrative for those who may be new to um, grant writing and presenting applications? All right, hopefully my mic will not break up this time. So there's two parts of the budget that you would have to do, a budget and a budget narrative. Uh, so, it, and the budget is just the framework of a personnel. You put a number in there. Uh, it may be supplies. You put a number in equipment. You put a number in, and then you come up with the total at the end of that. That part is easy. The budget narrative is sometimes what's forgotten to be completed. So, some support a budget and just put the budget in without the narrative. That's a common. I would say 50% of applicants don't put the narrative in. It's important that you uh, have the narrative in with your budget. So for example, personnel, who is the personnel? You can say then uh, it is the uh, art uh, director, it's not the art director, but the art coordinator. Uh, they will work 10 hours a week at the rate of $25. That would equal the total over a whether it's a 16 week or whatever it is, if it's equipment, we're going to have 12 uh, desks at uh, the rate of whatever each, but just put the narrative so they know what is going to happen with that 
those funding parts. Don't forget the narrative that's extremely important to back up your budget. Uh, I hope that answered that question, Devon, and there wasn't a break up in there. I mean, it, it, it answered it somewhat. Um, it didn't necessarily break up, but if you can, uh, one, is there, is that a requirement for individual artists? And if so, um, how does that, how does creating a budget narrative and the budget and what panelists may be looking for per se from an individual artist and an organization when they're scoring a grant? Okay, thank you for uh, delineating that part. So I'm gonna have Kamazi do me a favor and give the budget narrative uh, for the individual for PEP, but individuals for AHFP, the fellowship awards, you don't have a budget to put in. Uh, you order and then you can use that funds for anything you want because the fellowship programs are based off of the things you have done in the past. And then we're trying to just keep you in DC. We just want you to stay as an artist in DC and keep continuing what you're doing. So you can use that those funds for whatever you want, except for food uh, or drinks. Uh, so it could be that, and my old uh, director of the grants used to say, you could use it for cat litter if you wanted to. So you don't have to have a budget or nav to put in for the fellowship awards uh, at all. For the, uh, for PEP, I'm going to have Kamazi answer that for, for PEP because I have not had the individuals for PEP. And that's the only other individuals there would be. Uh, but for the organization, everyone would have to have an, a budget and a budget narrative. Uh, it's up to the organization to, pre to put that information in there. And if you don't have that, it's just omitted. And it may be that you didn't know where to find that document, but it's, it's, it's in the grant application. The other thing I'm going to do, I know you didn't ask this question, uh, Demai, yet. One of the things that we find out that is a common every grant cycle and every year I've been here is that m about 10% to 20% of folks don't start working in the portal until the day of the grant due. And that can present a huge problem for you because you can find out there's glitches uh, in there. You may find out there's things that you didn't know how to upload a work sample or, or support material. Just don't start working in the portal the day of or the hour before that you're trying to submit. That becomes a huge issue. The portal is crowded on that day, the day of a grant submission. So it could freeze on you. It could do a lot of different things. So that's the main, I mean, I would say 10 to 20% of folks usually don't get to submit and there it's like, it's four o'clock is due and it's four ten and I get an email. I couldn't submit because there's something wrong with the portal. That's fine. If there's something wrong with the portal, we'll go from the back end and we can make and help that out. But it's also at the that part we have to then go into to find out when did you log in and how how long have you been logged in. And so that's going to those things will together help us make that decision to either add that into there because if it was a, a true issue on the portal part where there's a glitch and it froze we're going to make sure we add you and we're not going to uh, uh not have you in the uh the grant mix but i would say don't start the day of nor an hour before there's due to start pushing things through to submit sorry for jumping the gun on that one devon no, you're okay. I'll let um, Kamanzi go ahead and answer and speak to that um, other grant portion that you had mentioned um, so that people can be aware of the differences and the nuances um, between the two. Yeah, so for the uh, projects, events, and festivals for individuals, uh, you do have to have a budget and you do have to have a budget narrative for that project explaining and breaking down, and, and I would argue, and quite because I've I've seen panelists, um, I've seen them score, and I've seen their comments, and so clearly, saying what expenses all the way down to the detail, how much, so um, how much, how many artists, how much are those artists, the insurance, because for projects, events, and festivals, you need event insurance, so you need a quote for that. Um, you also need down to the supplies. I mean, how many laptops, how many chargers, how many, uh, I mean, it's, 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 if I think when people break it down in that sort of kind of logical way, the who, what, when, and where involved in the project and, and associating, um, 
the amounts and the quantity and then telling a story. That's really it. And so when 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 I see I, I've sat in a few debriefings for PEF I for projects, events, and festivals, excuse me, that's the acronym PEF for individuals. Uh, I've seen the um, I've seen the panelists ask those questions. Like I, I don't see, you know, they ping or they they really ding the word of you know penalizing an application if it really doesn't clearly show where it's going, how much it's going to cost. I mean, really, again, the budget narrative is so key. Khalid knows this too. Just demonstrating that, um, not that you just have a good idea, but that it, you've actually thought about all the pieces that are involved in it to make it successful and how much it costs. Uh, to back up the quotes and your ideas. Thank you for that, Kamanzi. I appreciate your insight. Um, hopefully that helped answer some questions for a few people. Um, and before we go back around, because I really did want to, or we really did want to make this about engaging um, the audience as much as possible. Um, Khalid, you had mentioned beforehand about not starting to submit documents because I know even for myself you kind of work on the outside of it and uh, you have a spreadsheet here and a spreadsheet there so people can have the information but when would you if not then about how far ahead are you is your suggestion in terms of that timeline and time frame in terms of actually submitting the documents and not having them just on standby Great. All right. So I was a grant writer uh, before being with the commission as a grant manager. And I've been a writer for a, probably about 15 years. And I'm not going to say don't wait till the last minute because as a grant writer, I, I did that all the time. Wait till the last minute. It's just the way that the cookie crumbles. Uh, but I'm going to say a day before, whatever the deadline is, it's always on a Friday at 4 o'clock. Try to submit your proposal application on a Thursday by four o'clock, just one day before is very beneficial to you uh, because you will find out if there's something missing. It won't allow you to submit. If there's a glitch in there, it will it give you time to work that glitch out uh, or then get support for that. So I would say one day before, that's all. And also, okay. if, you sub if you submit, if you're, so here's a great grant tip uh, for, for everyone here. Uh, if you can submit your proposal a week before it's due and notify your grant, the grant manager or the program manager for that grant and have them, can you review my uh, grant application to make sure is everything is in there and let me know if there's anything uh, missing that I should be uh, work. They will go over your grant and spend about a half hour on the phone with you, but it has to be in a week before the, the deadline and work with you to say, Here's what I've noticed panelists will talk about or ding you for or some of the things that are great about that. They will spend that half hour with you to talk about that proposal. And that truly doesn't happen enough that I think uh, that I would like to see that happen. Because if, if, if I knew that a grant manager can uh, look at my proposal, read it through before it's submitted, I would do it. Uh, and I didn't have that even as a grant writer when I was doing res, uh, writing grants. I can't remember private or government that I had that that was an opportunity to do. So that's a great opportunity to try to do to get forward, put your grant in a week before to get someone to go over it, at least at the commission of a, your grant manager to look through it to give you some input on that grant application. So I definitely recommend that. Okay. And so with that being said, we are coming up on time and I want to spend the last uh, bit of time that we have together um, to allow people to ask the rest of their questions um, as it pertains to the discussion. So Kamanzi, I'm going to ask you again, kind sir, to if you had um, track of any questions that were in the chat or queue. Yes, I do. Um, I, the most recent one I see here is, um, hello, if you have a unique budget breakdown, can we upload our breakdown? Or do we have to add the line items in your format with a narrative explanation? Your voice is uh, 
going in and out. Can you repeat that, kind sir? Yeah, and because my team, my, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm at uh, I'm at the office, and I've been putting in a work request from my computer. It's it's a very old computer, so I apologize. Um, the question is, if you have a unique budget breakdown, can we upload our breakdown, or do we have to add the line <laughs> items in your format with a narrative explanation? Uh, you can add it into uh, the budget breakdown with the explanation. And if you can't find, an, uh, here's, here's a trick I'll tell you. If you can't find an opportunity to, it won't do a drop down, or that's not the way that document is, is working, add it into your support materials. That's another trick that you can use. So if about your application or a question in the application that need more explanation, and you don't have an opportunity to explain that question anywhere, put that in a narrative and put it in your support materials. If there's a couple, make that just one document to say, uh, you could call that, uh, you know, extra information uh, and put that in your support materials so that it helps the panelists not have a question or not have to guess about something, but it's clear from your part by putting it in the support material. Okay, uh, Khalid, another question. How do you add more documents to upload than, than one document? So in the portal, there will be a, a like, so for support materials, uh, work samples are only, the only ones that you can add. You just click on the right-hand side of where you would uh, put in support materials, add another support material, a, another line out for support materials or work samples, and it will just open up another uh, line to add that document. That one is not okay. a hard one. That's an easier one. Just look to the right of of that support material or work sample, and it will just say add another item, and you just click on that, a plus sign. Okay, um, Devon, I'm getting a lot of questions about. Uh, yeah, so, I saw that. that. Yeah. Yep, I saw that. Um, My it right. says a twenty. Go ahead. Yeah. So. The, so everyone, because I've seen a lot of questions in different points, I, I think the best way to respond to this, um, debriefings are always ongoing. If you have ever submitted an application to our agency, we have the panelists' comments for that, and we will share those with you. Uh, you all you would have to do is just email one of us, email the agency, and we can track down that application in the comments. That's So that's never, I saw a lot of kind of comments and questions about that. That's never an issue at all. And that's always ongoing. Um, and if one of us wasn't, again, if we weren't in the actual panelist, the, we weren't in the actual review of your application, we will have to, all we could do is share the comments. So if the person of the grant manager who was actually there is no longer here, is no longer with the agency, the comments are always there, so that's never a problem, folks. It's been an issue, I think, uh, for some over the years, and I think we're changing it this year, so it's going to be uh, different. You had 60 days to ask for a debrief, and if you didn't do it in the 60 days from October 1st, so that's in October and November, that would be when debriefs are happening, then you it would be hard, not hard for them to get it, but it you wouldn't be able to get the debrief. Uh, so like you would say, like panel time, I mean, grant time is coming around in, in May. And if you're asking for a debrief in May or June, you may say, I couldn't get a debrief because that would be hard because we're then supporting applicants who are, who are completing their application and asking for technical help about the application. So to go back, it would be creating the meeting and everything. So that's when always uh, reason why we don't do debriefs all through the year for certain times we're involved in supporting the applicants first and and i know the briefing will be a part of supporting the applicants but it's a different type of that support so we want to support the applicants in completing their application when the applicants the applications are due but now this year i believe we had an equity task force that we met for uh about eight months and one of the topics that we have brought up today we spent a lot of time on was the briefs if you didn't get a grant uh, or you uh, got a declination letter, we're looking at supporting people who did not get a grant, their debrief the comments, uh, and we haven't solidified this yet, but you would just automatically get those comments so that you don't have to ask for a debrief. Uh, you would just automatically get them. 
Now, as soon as that, now I'm not saying that that's solidified yet, but we are looking, that was a huge question and that was the answer or one of the things that we had talked about as a solution for that is whether they ask for a debrief or not, present them with the debrief so that they can go back and then get that information on their own if they want that or go into those comments to look for it. So that's been some of the issues of why the breach haven't happened all year long. But I think this year is gonna change. Okay, I see. Uh, Kamazi, you still here with us? Sir. So, yeah. Do we have any more um, questions that need to be fielded and asked? And, and, and I apologize. Devon, my, my computer is just acting up again. I got to get a new computer here at the office. So things kind of okay. going up and down. Um, I got your back. Also, it says from Hillary K. Actor, um, also, could you share how other individual PEF artists in the past have addressed the question of what measures they use to make their work accessible? Now I'm going to uh, Kamaji. Do you want to take that question? Yeah, and I guess I want to talk to. That's more of a. Um, that's a question where I want to. Can we unmute them? Because that's a better question to. I want to know yep, what they mean that's by more accessible. Let me see. Sorry. Can you hear me? Do they mean, yeah, do you mean individuals yes. with disabilities? Do you mean accessible for a virtual world? What do you, because accessible could be many things. Where are you going with that one? I'm going from what I recall without looking at it off the top of my head from last year's application in terms of accessibility. And I think that means in terms of things like physical disability, as well as, you know, people who may not have economic access. I mean, it's a question on the, on application but i don't remember how it's worded is that clear am i being clear yeah um yeah and I, i'm the the best way i would respond to without looking at i mean because again i i don't evaluate the applications I, I look at it more from a compliance perspective i have seen what other panelists have said about um, what makes a good application holistically, but breaking it down accessibility. I, I think again, with access, the, the great applications that I see that are that are approved and that get funding address everything that's asked in a real complete way. And so again, if, if you're gonna have, let's say this is pre-COVID, which all everything has been pretty much in terms of programmatic um, design, if you're gonna have a public event, you gotta make sure that it's accessible to people with disabilities. And if that's, if that's not addressed, then you will be knocked for that. Um, I think the virtual, I know a lot, I've talked to a lot of people in the ADA community, ver, ver, this new COVID world has been a blessing. There aren't physical impediments to access uh, and as it would be if you were having, again, a, a physical space uh, performance or event, um, but that's, what what I've seen there, I, I haven't seen any curveballs or any kind of things that any any things that would be troubling. Again, if you're going to anything that has to do with access for a certain community, making sure that it's located in a place where they can access. If there's metro, if there's public transportation, I mean, all these are all these things are to take. When we're talking about logistics and planning, all these things should be taken into account. So again, that your application isn't. Um, isn't penalized for for not really planning or prior preparing or listing for for those sort of important accommodations. Did you want to add anything to that, Khalid? Did I miss anything with that? No, I think that was spot on, especially when the part that you said the application score the highest are really going to be the application that's complete. There's everything in that application is answered, uh, and so that's spot on right there. Those are the applications I, I usually typically see on the rank. I mean, the number is nine nine nine. Uh, or 989, those are the highest scoring applications, complete thorough applications. And next question I see is, will I be able to ask for the panel comments for my FY21 grant? I never got a note from my manager. Uh, so FY21 will be that 60 days out within November. Uh, and I would say if you need to get those sooner than later, just in case that 
we don't have the policy that goes into place. So contact your grant manager uh, and ask for those uh, comments now. Uh, May, I think, is around the first week in May that the applications, the bulk of our applications open. Uh, and so you don't want to wait until that time. That's a hard, and even for me, that would be a hard time to do a debrief during open times. You get so, as a grant manager, there's about uh, 150 people applying. You get those questions all the, about that application, whether the portal is how to get into it, on specific questions about the grant application of that current fiscal year. So just help us help you and get that question into your grant manager. I didn't, uh, didn't get my debrief and I would like the comments on my debrief. So just do that sooner, at least before the first week in May. Um, uh, I am going ahead to unmute uh, Ms. Brown in the audience. She asked if I could unmute her for her question. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So I just wanted to get a little more clarity on the debriefing. I'm specifically speaking of the Sister Cities grant that I applied for and was denied a couple years ago. And I reached out to everyone to get debriefed. Um, and as I noted, there was someone else that was in charge of this um, grant management who was given a higher position. And then there was someone else in her position to do the debriefing, but I, I never received it. I was just passed on from one grant manager to the next grant manager because it was someone else's responsibility to debrief me on the Sister Cities grant. And so I see that it's coming up again. And I do want to apply for it, but I would like to know, you know, what it was that I didn't do effectively before I applied for it again. So is it possible to get a debrief from that long ago? Uh, hey, Selena, good to see you here. Uh, <laughs> so I would say if it's a couple years ago, you reached out. Yes, you can get a debrief and since the city has had turnover, that's just transparent. For us in man, I mean, uh, at the commission, I have in my six years, I probably have seen maybe four different grant managers for sister cities versus like East of the River. I've been the grant manager consistently through East of the River for six years. So I will say sister cities has had some turnover uh, amongst that one. Uh, and if you can't get a, uh, I'm just writing a note down here, Selena, for you. Uh, I will try. What year do you know? Do you know what year it was? We could do this offline, but you can send me an email to let me know what year it was, so I can go into the portal and just pull off those comments. Uh, and it, obviously, I wasn't the grant manager, and so I couldn't give you any additional information about that. But I could just pull off the comments that was put into the portal uh, for that. Uh, but Selena, if you could just give me a year, uh, send me an email about the year. I will go ahead and look into that to try to get you that information to help out. And I don't know if Sister Cities is going to be this year, but it may be. I know why we didn't do it this this past this current year is because of COVID. So we didn't have a, a, a strong need for that. But I'll definitely try to get you your comments, Selena. Okay. And um so I don't see any more um questions in the field. And it looks like we're at time. Uh so to respect everybody's time. Um, I want to say thank you all for coming to join us. Again, this session was uh, recorded, so you will be able to access this conversation through our website, which is brand new. Go check it out. Uh, give us some feedback um, at ceh.dc.gov, um, where you can submit other suggestions um, to the agency. And if you also want to reach myself, which is Devon, D-E-V-O-N, that Lacine at DC.gov. I'll just put it here in the chat below. Um, so if anybody wants to reach out, give suggestions for um, any upcoming workshops or any, any of those things that uh, the public might like to see, um, we would love to hear from you. And with that being said, I'm not going to hold any anyone else up. Um, Again, you can go over to our website to check out all of our um, other events. I'm gonna go ahead and stay here for a little bit longer so everybody can get this email at dc.gov. But with that being said, you all, um, again, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day.
Um, I've just put my email, so I'm going to stay here and leave the meeting open for anybody who wants to uh, go ahead and take that uh, for, any for any future communications. But thank you all for being in attendance today. Yeah, you all were a great audi everybody. audience. The participation was love. I appreciate that. Thank you all. All right, I think we're good to go, Khalid. Um, I'll talk to you and reach out to you offline. Um, All right, be good, well, kind sir. Yeah, um, it was good. Best of wishes. Best of wishes to you. Um, I appreciate you. you being a stand-up gentleman and coming over here having a conversation. Um, and we'll talk. Gotcha. Take care, okay. Devon. Thank I'll you. Talk to you. Later. Bye bye. Okay.